Today we are back at the British Motor Museum in Gaydon for Fiat and Friends, celebrating the pioneering automaker's 125th anniversary. The tenor has been great with a plethora of highlights from Fiat's thoroughbred back catalogue. So we thought we'd take the chance to walk round the show with the aim of answering one question. Of all the cars to come out of Turin over the years, which one of them is peak Fiat? <laughs> So here's something I might recognise, mainly because my company car is actually the one just behind it. But this is its bigger brother, the original Novo 500. Absolutely and gorgeous. It is, yeah, it's very tidy. I mean, it's what most people think of when you say Fiat these days, isn't it? Especially considering the new 500, which I have the pleasure of daily driving, is their best-selling car in, that's in a the, very long time That's indeed. the new, new 500. That's the though. new, new. Well, there's the new, new, new 500. There's the new, new, new electric one now. Yeah. But this is the original Nova 500, yes. because they actually made one before this. It gets very confusing. Yeah, yeah. But this is Dante Giacosa's absolute masterpiece. I adore these cars. It's gorgeous. It's got that little air-cooled flat twin at the back, which makes, yes. at best, sort of 20 horsepower. These are not that's fast cars. on a good cars. day, on a nice cold but Day. <laughs> these were engineered to be the least amount of car basically it was one up from a Vespa scooter you know mm. so the doors are this thick and this fabric roof on the early examples wasn't a luxury you couldn't option that that was to save money on steel because that's cheaper <laughs> than making a whole roof skin you could buy spares for these from your local news agent they were designed to be able to do around 60 miles to the gallon because it was yeah. in the fuel crisis these were engineered like the 2CV to be the most out of the least which is what I was small fish say, it's kind of the the Italian's answer to the dish of a it really and, is. Uh, and yeah, it succeeds uh, greatly at that. What I think earns this potentially the title of Peak Fiat is how well they've endured. You know, this is a 60-year-old car near enough, and they're a style icon. You still see them in Vogue yeah, magazine yeah. and in adverts for posh perfumes that not I don't buy. And <laughs> all sorts. This is still a car that you could drive, you know, down a little rutted farm track in Italy, or you could drive to a film premiere in Las Vegas, and still you would look cool and stylish. And I think this has got to be well up there. It's definitely up there. Is it peak Fiat? Well, we'll discuss what it means to answer that question a little later, but it's definitely, definitely up there. Next up, the 169 Panda full stop is a great car. It was European yes, car indeed. of the year. They're tremendous. My mum's got one. Great oh, cars. But this great was taste. the creme de la creme of 169 Pandas, <laughs> the 100 HP. The can we call it hot one or is warm one? Yeah, it? it's, it's warm. It's more than tepid, I'll give you I that. I was going to say, it's more like a, a tikka masala than you yeah, can do. But yeah. you know what? That's more than enough. Because as we said with the Nova, it's enough. It's enough performance. It's a 1.4 yeah. litre, 16 valve, 6 speed gearbox, about, well, 100 horsepower. Not to 60 in nine ish seconds. So yeah. again, so fast it's, it's enough. It's not to fit rapid, but it's peppy. Exactly. Yeah. And these are just great, huge, fun cars. Think of it more as being an up GTI sort of car than yeah. a golf GTI. Yeah. And it's, I it's, think these are tremendous and they cost next to nothing these days. It adds a little tickle of fun to what is an extremely practical and well-designed car. So Hugely it's... spacious inside for a yeah. small car as well. Yeah. And yeah. I yeah. love the 100 HP body kit, the big sort of boxy arches. Yeah, the big that is one thing end. that's always kind of taken me on these. It's that it's not particularly, you know, it's not blisteringly fast, but it looks good. Doesn't it just? It looks really good. It's and that red 100 horsepower cool. badge on the back, you you can't really go wrong. No, and this particular example looks absolutely lovely. The fact it's got four Michelin tires on it and it's in great nick. <laughs> this is an enthusiast owned 100 HP. Yes, indeed it is. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's, it's, it's not the best hot hatch ever. It might not even no. be the best Fiat Panda ever, but it is <laughs> awesome. Definitely. Big fan. Back in the 90s, Fiat decided it wanted to get back into making sports cars, and these two were how it did it. We'll start with the Barchetta, Punto derived front wheel drive roadster. Doesn't sound entirely conventional, but Look at it, it's gorgeous. It is isn't it? really pretty. Just the sort of the great front arches. It's so it elegant. help you place the car when you're driving it. It's, it's so pretty, and it doesn't look like an MX5 or an MR2. No, it it's its, its own, own thing. thing. And you know what Barchetta means in Italian? It means li me. little boat. And you know what? It sort of looks like one, doesn't it? <laughs> now you know I'd that. I'd leave a boat thing to the NC MX5 personally, but it yeah, does look like a lovely little streamliner. Lovely it? chassis in these as well. Revy little engine. They handle really well for a front wheel drive car. Mm. You know what? Give these a chance. It, again, probably not peak Fiat, but as an underrated <laughs> 90 sports car, I think these are great. It fun. is gorgeous. Well, let's then, uh, move on to this little number then, shall oh, we? Oh, the coupe. The coupe is gorgeous. They're very similarly designed, but they don't actually share a platform. Do you know so who designed this? Enlighten me. Originally, Chris Bangle. He of ah. co controversial BMW fan. Yes, yes, yes. H hence certain quake things. These are sort of nicknamed the butt cheek headlights, but I actually really like <laughs> Hey, those. well, I mean, I like them too. Massive clamshell bonnet, the strakes down the side. This does look like a baby Ferrari, it doesn't does, it? Well, it he might be pushing it slightly no, I'm there. I'm sorry, no, no. But it's, it's gorgeous. And it does sound good too. I mean, Ferraris never came with V10s, but this has got the inline five, 20 five, valve turbo. It's on half, this a one. half a V10. Half a V10, I bet tremendous. it sounds and these are lovely fast. too. These do yeah? 60 in less than seven seconds. Wow. These are quick cars. Inside the interior, all that body color, bit of metal. 
their Yay. swooping dashboard. I think these are stunning. And again, they go like hell, they handle well, and these are going up in value. These are becoming collectible. Yeah, as they should be, as they should be. Very, very cool. Controversially, cool I prefer this to the Alpha GTV sister car. Oh, I prefer this to the GTV as well, personally. Good man, let us know yeah. in the comments. But <laughs> I think you could put this right up there because it's, it's of that era of Toyota Celica and VW Corrado, but mm. it's got that Italian flair. It's got a bit of... I can't say you shouldn't have said quite, that's French, <laughs> but it's got a bit of something about it, you know? Yeah, a little a little something. So here's another sports car from Fiat. Another nice wind in your hair, opening top roadster. And it's younger little son over there yeah, as well. The gorgeous 124 Spider. Absolutely Next to so. the gorgeous 124 Spider. <laughs> this one, classic saloon car derived, the beautiful twin cam engine. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it look stunning? I bet it does. Penifrina design, almost looks like a baby Ferrari. I think this is beautiful with yeah. the European spec bumpers, those horrible As American- they should be, not the American- Railway sleepers rubbish. on the front yeah. of it, no. <laughs> looks absolutely beautiful, this one. As largely standard as we can see, this one's actually for sale if you're interested, yeah. 18, 950. Um, Could and be worse. It's a left-hand drive, so it's probably an American spec car, which is why there's no rust. Yeah. These do like to rot these cars, but they this do. one, Absolutely, absolutely stunning. stunning inside and out. Red well. leather, red oh. leather. But if this is maybe a little bit too basic, too crude, possibly too unreliable, what about <laughs> this? The modern Abarth, in this case, one two four spider. This is actually Mazda MX five. It is. It's ND it's based. In Japan. Same platform. The Abarth version's got a 1.4 litre turbo, so it goes like crazy and it sounds amazing. And it'll go forever too because it's Japanese underneath. It's very clever. And it is <laughs> a great car. Very underrated, I think. I mean, yeah. which do you prefer? Old or new? Old or new? Let us I know mean, in the comments. Yeah, that'll be up to you guys. So, from what I've been told, this is actually the cheapest car at the entire show. It is. This it is. is the controversial multipler, the six-seater <laughs> MPV thing. This yeah. particular one has got the awesome, very uncommon Zender, Zender body kit. kit on it. Different yeah. wheels, it's a little bit lower. I actually think this looks awesome. I, I think really it like looks this. great. I mean, these things, granted, when they came out, they were much maligned for rather obvious reasons. You, you can see more on that one there without the kit. Yeah. It's slightly <laughs> divisive, it's not normal, let's be no, honest. But no. I think it's charming in that field. I think they've aged very well, yeah. just for the sake of being extra quirky and extra special. I mean, the Zender kit on this, there are bits all over and it's 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 awesome it's awesome it gives it's it a real chunky. 90s you either get this kind of style or you don't if you're 90s kids like we are this resonates with you this yeah. particular one was actually given to the owner this was a free car which yeah. means as we know you free cars complain about free cars of course the multiple name was brought back for this car it originally dated back to the late 50s early 60s the when it? exactly the yes there you go he's done his research <laughs> it was kind of the original stylish family bus type thing and you know mm. what in a weird way i think this succeeded that for the 90s rather well yeah the style yeah. isn't to everyone's taste but i think it's it's i, I suppose someone who works in an art gallery would call it experimental and it's very avant-garde avant-garde yes mm. there you go um, and, uh, and this particular example has come with uh, apparently stacks and stacks of paperwork yeah, too I can despite see being all a free the for all the i mean there's all the stuff on the front but there's apparently another stack in the boots as well so but even as a standard car like we've got there yeah. there is a quirky charm to it not to mention six seats are hugely practical six seats and three the, abreast both and you'll rows. notice actually even a stack they've got a really low floor so not only are they very easy to get into but actually they also drive quite well they actually yeah. handle quite well yeah, low standard. cg and all that so, i mean this particular one's got two child's seats in the front so it won't a brave set many hearts racing unless you put a 25 turbo in it <laughs> but i think it deserves a mention because frankly while it's not necessarily the best fear i think it could be the best mpv <laughs> mm. We've rewound a few generations of Fiat sports cars here for this, the X19. I mean, just yeah. look at this. Continuing thing. in a long lineage of Fiat coupes, oh. little, little sports Targa things. Tops. This Targa tops. Targa yes. tops. This particular one is a later Batoni car, so you can tell by the slightly bigger bumpers, but even with the bigger bumpers on it, this is hasn't that got an MGPs. American regulation thing? I believe it was. These later ones were built by Batoni rather than Fiat, but mm. even with this, this hasn't got MGB syndrome. I think it wears that really <laughs> right. well. might have Triumph TR7 syndrome. It's got a TR7 type look. Sorry, Fiat fans. <laughs> but other than that, we've done a video on one of these. Do go and watch it. These mm. are a sweet little car. Lovely saloon car derived engine in the middle, so it's well balanced. It's revvy, it's keen. And you know what? They weigh next to nothing, so you can fling them yeah. around. They are huge fun to drive. They look like a lot of fun but you better have somewhere dry to keep it yeah they're not very watertight but <laughs> i think we were kind of saying earlier about what is peak fiat and i think you have to talk about fiat as being what they've done throughout all the generations yeah. they've made the most out of the least they've they, done a bit of everything really haven't they they, they sort of take humble mechanicals hmm. and make them enjoyable even if it's yeah. a little city car or an mpv or a sports car they do it with simple and basic and i think the x19 is one of the best examples of it there is a good exception to that though do go on 
So perhaps we should uh, move on to it next. Mm. So we were talking about Fiat making the best of humble mechanics. Not always. Not always. Here's something. Is it the Fiat Ferrari or is it the Ferrari Fiat? Well, it's a name you recognise from Ferrari. This is the Fiat Dino. What a car. What I mean, a car apart indeed. from how gorgeous it is. And one of the best bad guy cars of all time. Obviously, this one isn't the all black one from no, the Italian no, no. job. It's but, not at the um, end of a tunnel of the bulldozer. No. But <laughs> this has got a genuine Ferrari V6 in it. Yeah, and so, I believe this one's also the 2400, so the full fat. Beautiful. So the story goes with this. Ferrari wanted to enter Formula 2 and the rules for the 68 season, I think it was, stipulated you had to have sold 500 of an engine in a road-going car before mm. you were allowed to enter it. Ferrari couldn't make that many cars, let alone sell them. <laughs> so Fiat went, well, look, give us the engines and we'll sell them if we can put them in a car. Mm. So Fiat actually made the engines, which Enzo Ferrari wasn't very happy with, but they were allowed to put it in their own car. This did see use in the Ferrari Dino, obviously, yes, yes, but of those are a three, four hundred thousand pound car. These are not. They're expensive, but they're not but hundreds yeah, of thousands. Yeah, I mean, I was looking at them and they are still a, a pretty penny, especially as, uh, as Fiat's go. But it's gorgeous. It's but Tony's styling. It's stunning. Just absolutely, this is a proper GT. Look, loads of space inside, mm. but Tony's style with Chromodora wheels on it. This is, I think this is every bit as cool as a Ferrari. To be honest, I would take this over the Dino. I think this, this is bedroom wall poster stuff from the same company that brought you the Punto. <laughs> it's absolutely charming, isn't it? And I genuinely think if you did, there isn't even a badge on it. There you go. If you, if you stuck up. <laughs> If you stuck a Maserati badge on this or a Ferrari badge, I don't think many people will question it. Yeah. Genuinely. Yeah. Quite Absolutely easily. stunning. You could argue this is where Fiat reached its real zenith of <sighs> capability. I think considering that Fiat has done a bit of everything for every class and every category, for me, I think this takes it. I think you know this is my peak Fiat. Do you know what's quite interesting is my peak Fiat actually is the complete opposite. I was well, going to go for the Nuovo for 500. That's a decent choice. I mean, it's, it's classic. It is what they're known for. It's and stylish. it's what they seem to just be making over and over and over again as the years go on. Controversially, so. I think Fiat makes some of the best small cars ever. That's oh, they why do. I, they they do, I hands one. down. Oh, of course you do. I think this is the thing. We've encapsulated Fiat perfectly at this show because we've got everything from a tiny little diminutive city car with its tiny little twin cylinder engine and mm. no roof because it's cheaper <laughs> to a wacky six-seater MPV to exotic sports cars and hot hatches yeah. to a Ferrari engine GT. And I think yeah. that is why I love Fiat so much is they they really do do something for They do for a everyone. bit of everything and nine times out of ten they do it pretty well too. I would agree with that. Well, let us know in the comments, what is your favourite Fiat? Is it one of the ones we've talked about? Is it a different one entirely? Is it the Ferrari Dino? Because that's basically a Fiat. Who knows? Well, whatever your decision may be, don't forget to like and subscribe and we will talk to you very soon indeed. Ciao! <laughs>